Hello again, Kevin. Hi there. How are you doing? I'm <laughs> good. How are you today? Good. Yeah, busy. It's kind of getting ready to go to Munich for three months. Wow. Can I ask why? Uh, I'm artist in residence, um, care of the German Ministry of Culture in three months. And I just exist in Munich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. That sounds uh, definitely you've got a busy time coming up. Right. We were unfortunately cut short last time, technical problems. Uh, so I've got to I've got to begin. La Cha Cha. What problems happen? <laughs> it's a, hang, hang on. It's, it's okay. On. Just just bear with me. Just one second. Okay? No problem. Sorry, someone died for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. There we are. Uh yes. So our la our last our last chat was cut short, technical problems and so on. Uh, so I've got to begin, La Cha Cha. What problems did you encounter during filming? Did anything stop the filming? What was, you know, any hiccups that you had along the way, which was a difficult time to film already? Well, it was in the middle of COVID, so it was intrinsically difficult anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, we we shot on iPhones, which was, you know, made things a bit lighter and easier. Um, but no, we had fantastic weather first week of the shoot. I mean, just amazing telling the cast off for getting suntans and stuff but then the <laughs> sky and um we negotiated two storms with names um everyone camping you know tents in trees um renamed our sets after first world war battle <laughs> places you know it was insane it was i mean i often got up by the lake where i had a little vintage caravan um and looked outside and uh, and just thought if the crew have gone, I, I I don't blame them. I would. I mean, one girl from the art department went home with trench foot. Whoa. Um, so <laughs> they had its problem. Um, but we, you know, it, it was a kind of blitz spirit, you know. It was the camaraderie kicked in. People were just so glad to be doing something during lockdown, you know. I think that's how we got away with it. We bubbled down and I had a lot of fun. I mean, most fun I've had making a film, to be honest. There was, was no stress or pressure because we just did it for fun. <laughs> we had no ex expectations, of, you know, whatsoever. It was, it was just something to do during lockdown. And um, as a con consequence of my, you know, mobile film school, which I just set up teaching people to mess on, I, you know, smartphones, um, and we had our funding cut when uh, covid broke so um i kind of just picked that up again during lockdown we we trained a lot of people a lot of a lot of first time heads of department you know i had a few mates into mentor professionals you know and all the cast came from here there and everywhere I, you know i decided to get the twin town people who were who are still alive you know back for for the posterity um that's what they did they came and we 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 made a film somehow <laughs> I mean, it's great that you did. I mean, the atmosphere, it comes across on screen when you're watching the film. It does look like it would, it would have been a fun shoot because, uh, you know, yeah. it comes across just watching the film. Uh, and you mentioned Twin Town again and, and filming on iPhones now, of which you said you teach. I mean, could you imagine back when you made Twin Town that people would be making films on phones, that it was possible to make films on phones just in not too many years later, to be honest? No, I couldn't. I mean, we, we shot on a 35 millimeter celluloid Araflex, where the the um i mean on the iphones we bought three moondog anamorphic lenses just to kind of enhance the the widescreen lookability of it which costs 180 quid each on amazon and my prime lens kit on twin town would have been worth in the region of nine hundred thousand pounds so, you know, <laughs> that's a big difference, isn't it? Who'd have thought 25 years later? Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, this is a great example of what you can do. You know, if you set your mind to it and you you want to make a film and most people have got smartphones these days, what advice would you give to anybody that wanted to get out there and, and make something? Well, what some tips you could give them? Well, first of all, before you pick the phone up, go and get a good microphone. <laughs> uh, you know, I'd rather spend two grand on a microphone and 500 quid on a camera. 
to be honest. Mm -hmm. You can fix um, pictures. You can't fix sound. And it's the biggest mistake rookies make is poor sound, you know. Um, But that's, you know, then you get a small, you know, mobile smartphone kit with a a slider and a decent tripod, get your decent microphone, a couple of lights, you know. But before, you know, you go out making a film, really decide what you want to say. I think that's the most important (laughs) thing. And that's another big mistake people make. They don't really know what they want to say. They sort of know what they want to do, but they they don't get to the the heart of what they what they're trying to express. You know, yeah. I mean, the cha cha, the bottom of la cha cha was why do we treat, treat old people so poorly? That's really the underlying theme. You know, mm. what is this race how we treat old people and how old people are condemned to, um, you know, these awful care homes. Mm. I don't want to. I don't want to go to one. I want to go to somewhere like La Cha Cha. <laughs> Why need more places like that? People can be creative, you know, in their in God's waiting room. Exactly. Yeah, I'd rather go to La Cha Cha too than the care homes, yeah. especially the state they're in at the moment as well. God, yeah. No. yeah. So yeah, that'd be my, my advice to to you know someone making film. Really decide what you want to say, and mm-hmm. then just learn a bit of basic film language. You know, that's what I teach sort of very quickly, mm-hmm. grammar. Um, and that's it, really. Off you go. It's cheap. Everyone's got a smartphone. You know, the you, you can edit on. You've got, a, you've got loads of little editing platforms now. You know, bumping it up to cinema spec isn't cheap, you know, mm-hmm. but for something you just put online, it's, it doesn't have to be expensive at all. The post-production implications of, of you know, we, that we encountered – bumping the film up to cinema spec was kind of pricey. But it's still a very, very ridiculously cheap film, petrol fumes. But um, yeah, that's that's more complicated than with the, with, the, with the metadata. Yeah. How did the idea for it first? Uh, what was the genesis of it all? Uh, oh, uh, I retailed a movie I wrote in Alabama years ago for a studio. Um, it, it was about snowbirds in you know, mobile homes, RVs living their life to the full similar so i just retailed that really over about a month and mm-hmm. set it here and um so you know i just happened to have that in my archive and um it worked you know with a bit of jiggery pokery <laughs> i mentioned when uh, when we first spoke the other week as well that one of the things i really enjoyed about the film was that i didn't know where it was going to go I loved it that I couldn't foresee what was going to happen next, which happens with a lot of a lot of films. Within your writing process, did you write it like in a linear fashion, or had you got ideas and you then pieced them together and was moving back and forwards? No, it's it's a three act structure. It's a classic three act structure. There's no no difference there. Um, it's just pretty bonkers. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know the, the the turning point where he relays the story of his fear of flying and killing all those goats oh sorry <laughs> anyway um yeah it's just it's just pretty bonkers um but no the the, the structure is a three-act structure um and i just like to push it in, 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 into that sort of insane direction shush sorry dog barking was there anything any ideas that you'd have uh, that you wrote down that you'd have liked to have filmed that you couldn't for any reason well, not ideas, but a lot of locations I lost. I, I, I literally run out of what we call weather cover. <clears throat> I mean, usually you have a few interior locations up your sleeve in case it rains. You know, it didn't just rain. We It was a nightmare. So I, I literally ran out of interiors. So I had, to, I had to rewrite all the time to, to accommodate, you know, just finding somewhere to go undercover. So, you know... In a nutshell, it lost an expansive visual look. It was, you know, the, the, all the vistas of the lake kind of disappeared, and you know, scenes that I'd set outside just mm-hmm. couldn't be. So it felt a lot more claustrophobic than I would, I would have liked. You know, but yeah. that's that's just four weeks, and it, and it rained for three of them nonstop. That's incredible that you got the film finished with that as well, yeah. considering the weather and you know weather and COVID. 
and everything else that has yeah. happened and you still got the finished film uh, which is you know testament to yourself that you and and all the cast and crew yeah amazing i mean it was an amazing experience um you know i made a speech when we wrapped saying you know um of course i care where a film ends up but this one i don't really if even if it gets lost you know in a cab on on the way to the the editing place i mean it we've had such a great time making this it really was one of those experiences which is which was more about the journey yeah you know but but having said that, of course we want something to happen to it and you know get a the few quid it costs local investors get their money back you know which is hopefully what we'll do but um no the the, the, the taking part was really what it was about you mentioned the storms and everything and the, you know some of the, the the not so good things that happened looking back on it now is there like one particular moment or one particular day or something that stands out as one of you know if, if not the happiest one of the funniest moments that you that you had when you were filming this uh, one of the happiest was getting all those rugby icons but around the campfire i mean they were you know apart from um what's his name the old new zealand hooker oh what's his name they were all welsh icons of rugby you know alan Wynne jones phil bennett scott quinnell i mean it was it was incredible that they actually turned up to sing mm. the iconic song Sospelbach around the fire that was was the high point for me <laughs> without a doubt <laughs> um and also there's a poignant moment where he spread the he spreads the ashes his dad's ashes where we actually used my own dad's ashes it was a sort of homage to him in a way yeah that was quite good wow yeah what a moment that must have been too how did how did you find the location the actual location for the campsite uh, a friend of mine owns this farm I'm, I'm living on now that, that I just decided to move to during lockdown. Didn't really know what was, you know, ahead of us. So I had a chance of beautiful weather, beautiful spring, a little vintage caravan, built a camp down by the lake and just existed in lockdown there. It was, it was paradise. And um, it's 28 acres and uh, I decided to stay. I built an edit suite, converted a big static caravan to an edit suite and decided I liked it so much I stayed and sort of converted it all into a cabin. So <laughs> it's just yes, yeah, on the Gower, Gower Peninsula. How long did it take to edit as well? Was it you know, and what type of an edit was it? Did you get frustrated uh, at any point, or did it go quite smoothly? It was quite smooth. Um, like I say, the metadata was a was a problem. Um, tallying up, it's a, it's a technical kind of anomaly with, with iPhones but that was I mean I had a an editor who, who dug us out of trouble he was technically very good so he managed to decipher all that information um, no it was a very straightforward edit you know I think it was six, six weeks something like that very quick cheap and cheerful dub and grade mm. we we could you know get away with really I mean and it still looks okay on the, you know on the big screen it's fine Oh yeah. So, so what was it in total then? From you going, I'm going to make a film to the, you know, the end of the edit. What was the the start and finish points on that one? Well, um, it was a month in June to write. Um, a month prep in July. A month shoot in August. Then I had a couple of months off uh, and got into editing just before. Christmas and New Year was finished. What do you like the best about the whole the, the whole creative process? Is what do you prefer writing or do you prefer the filming or the editing? Which bit sort of uh, oh, scratches hate, that itch? I hate writing, uh, um, but you've got to do it. Um, I think the the actual shoot is quite adrenalised. I enjoy it. You know, I, I like shooting, and then for me, the, the music. You know, I work very closely with the same composer every time, Mark Thomas, who did a fantastic score. So, yeah, we work very closely together. And, um, yeah, I, that, I enjoy that process. That's that's the icing on the cake for me, recording in the studio with orchestras and stuff. Yeah. 
because I think sometimes the music is is quite underrated part of the film, underappreciated part of films as well. When you know people are, are wowed by the visuals and the stories, because the, the music really is the it's the emotional push. That's what you know takes those emotional little triggers inside you. Sometimes, yes, you know, if you if you use a score, that's what it's it can change the dynamic of a film. You know, that's why I love doing it. Mm -hmm. You can just things change um, through the process. Um, same with foley. Foley's a dying art sound effects you know i i had to go to stuttgart the last time i did foley because they're dying you know the the art of foley is dying and it's very important part of the post-production process I and mean, it, again it can change the dynamic of the film good foley oh yeah definitely and it's just all a bit lazy these days. same with music it's just a guy on a synth you know yeah if, if, you, if you had to you know the old elevator pitch how would you uh, how would you describe La Chacha? People watching this and listening to it and they're thinking, oh, this sounds intriguing. What's it all about? How would you explain it to them? Well, if you're thinking of sending your mum and mum or dad to to one of those awful care care homes, don't just pause and watch La Chacha and just look at the alternative that might be out there as something different to um, to do with your your mum or dad's final final days on planet earth it's mm -hmm. um laugh doing it that's a big thing always have a laugh doing it do whatever you can to mm -hmm. try and laugh as much as possible is always good advice i think yeah uh, definitely. What, what have you got planned next what's up coming for you i know you said you're going to munich you've got this three month you've got, you've um, got well, that and then uh, i've got um three dates of a sort of countrywide. 25th anniversary Twin Town tour, which has been fantastic, um, playing theatres all over the country. Um, and I go to Munich for three months as artist in residence, mm -hmm. care of the German Ministry of Culture. So I'll probably write something or I'm like, well, I'm going to take my paints and paint and just hang out in Munich for three months. That's good. It's good. I, might, I might pick my mobile film school up again in the in the autumn. And any uh, anybody that's listening and watching this that's interested in your mobile film school, what's the best way that they can follow you and find out about this and get involved? Mobile, mo the mobilefilmschool dot com. I think, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. So there's a website. That's yeah. the best one. Well, brilliant. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you again for joining me today, having a chat about it. I really love the movie. Uh, I, I encourage everybody to go and Wait. watch it. And like you said, I encourage everybody to. Yeah, you are thinking about care homes or etc. Just. Let's get La Chacha and places like it instead. That would be uh, make the world a much better place. Definitely. Thanks very much for having me. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Bye.